Split Butte in the Snake River Plain of Idaho is this uh, large circular depression, this crater here amongst all these other volcanoes here in southern Idaho. Um, the Snake River Plain is known for its basaltic volcanism, uh, the lava flows, the shield volcanoes, these kind of low uh, profile uh, domes where lava just sort of oozed out across the surface. And we've seen volcanic activity here, basaltic volcanic activity, over the last three to four million years here in the central Snake River Plain. This area is at the far southern end of Craters of the Moon National Monument. This is a new part of the monument that was uh, incorporated, I believe, in the early 2000s. And this specific site has a really interesting geological story. Most of the shield volcanoes and volcanic vents in the Snake River Plain uh, erupted their basaltic lava, the lava flowed downhill. Uh, there's some variety there in terms of gas content and some other variables, but for the most part, they all just erupted onto the surface uh, non-explosively. This, this crater here, it's Split Butte, uh, shows great evidence for an explosive type of an eruption. And the explosive activity here is not because of a different type of magma, it was still basalt that was erupted here, but because the basalt, as it came up towards the surface, it interacted with some shallow groundwater. And as that groundwater was heated up, it flashed into steam, uh, which occupied more volume, it's an expansion process, and that expansion process literally Sh shredded and blew that lava into tiny, tiny pieces. So it became a much more explosive event, throwing chunks of uh, ash and larger material into the air. If we kind of wheel around to this side here, so now we're looking south, uh, this is the rim of Split Butte. And you can see these well-layered uh, and bedded uh, material behind me here. This material is not the type of basalt we typically see, the lava flows. This is all material that was blasted into the air and settled around the rim of the crater. And you can see the layering there. It's dipping away from the eruptive vent, which is down there where the crater is. Um, what's interesting here is if you kind of look, if we wheel around, so this is looking south. And if we wheel around here and look uh, to the west, we can see that there's really no big rim over there. There's a little bit of one as we reel around to the north. Uh, and then as we come around this way, we can see more of this kind of light brown bedded material that makes up uh, the rim here. So what this tells us is that when this volcano erupted, most of the material that was blown out of the volcano uh, was deposited on the east side of the vent. And that tells us that it was probably driven by the winds. If you know anything about the weather here in southern Idaho, we typically have strong prevailing winds out of the west. So during this eruptive event, all the material for the most part was blown over to this east side of the vent and accumulated to form maybe about a hundred or so feet vertically of well layered and bedded uh, pyroclastic material. Um, so this is a type of volcano that's called a mar, M-A-A-R. Um, and notice it's a very broad depression, um, not very tall, but these bits of evidence tell us about its origin. So the story here is that this rising body of magma intersects some groundwater. Um, that groundwater gets flashed into steam, which makes the eruption become explosive. This pyroclastic material, ash and chunks of lava and rocks get thrown out of the crater, accumulating on the east side as the wind's blowing. And then at some point as the eruption progresses, um, maybe all the groundwater was used up, maybe there was more magma that was able to overcome the, the amount of water that was present there. But at some point the eruption transitioned from explosive into more effusive or non-explosive. And we can see that by looking <clears throat> into the crater, you can see a, a rim of basaltic cliffs in there. And so what we had in this crater uh, at one point after the explosive phase was a lava lake. And so a lava lake sort of occupied it and ponded up in this little area in here. You can see my truck down there as a little bit of scale. And so this lava lake uh, stabilized, solidified, 
solidified to form the basalts you see there uh, and then eventually drained out a little bit back down into the vent to form this collapse feature here. So pretty extraordinary stuff here at Split Butte. I want to show you the, the nature of some of these deposits. Um, and so you can see that the landscape here is kind of different. It's uh, full of holes uh, eroded into this material that's been blasted out of the volcano. Uh, if we get up in here, we can see some of this primary material, these little chunks of lava of different sizes. Uh, some of them are kind of glassy, which indicates they interacted with water and cooled very quickly. They were quenched. Uh, in other places, what we see are big chunks of rock that were actually thrown out of the vent and into uh, this material. So here is a large chunk of basalt, maybe an older basalt, um, or maybe uh, one from the actual eruptive of, uh, process or event that was thrown out and landed in amongst all this kind of wet and bedded material up here. But you can see all the big holes that accumulate or sort of formed due to weathering. Imagine the, both the wind and the water have a role to play in these. And you can see some of the little arches and such in there. And if we just get to the top here to kind of conclude this thing, you can see as I look kind of to the south there, some of those nicely bedded layers on the outer rim of this mar, this, this uh, volcano that erupted into groundwater. So again, another interesting volcano here in the Snake River Plain of Idaho, Split Butte. Um, and all of its extraordinary history revealed in the rocks here in southern Idaho.